What's going on, YouTube? It is uh, 4.45 on Friday, September 15, 2023, back with another video. This is Forex Brizio. And uh, as usual, before we get started, please uh, smash that like button. And if you're just finding the channel, hit subscribe and ring the bell notification icon so you get notified when I post new content, which is uh, not all that often. So uh, you're not going to get bombarded. And uh, let's get into it. So uh, this is uh, another video on Heikenashi Smooth and uh, a little bit different um, version of it and a little bit different look. So if you watch the video that I posted um, about two days ago on the Heikenashi Smooth where the chart looked something like this where you had the Heikenashi Smooth and a couple of moving averages but no candlesticks. Basically, you were just trading off the Heikenashi Smooth. Uh, so you should go back and watch that one first so you have the context to this video. Okay, um, so let me just put the regular candlesticks back. Now, if you're not comfortable trading without seeing the candlesticks, which, to be honest with you, I'm not terribly comfortable with it. I mean, this looks great. In hindsight, to say, yeah, look at this is really easy. Cross, you know, moving over, average crossovers, follow the trend down, and look, this is definitely a viable methodology based on this. Okay, but if you're, I, I want to show you one little kind of quirk about using this, and also uh, an option if you still rather use the candlesticks in addition to something similar to this. Okay, so. Let me just go back to the regular candlesticks. Now, one of the issues with Heikenashi, because of the way it's calculated, is that it's not like a regular candlestick that has a high, low, open, close, you know, with a set time period. Heikenashi candles have a pretty complex formula, which I'm not going to get into. You can just look it up, uh, how Heikenashi is calculated, okay? So, one of the issues with it is, if you have a candlestick that's very impulsive moving down, this indicator will not show you the exact location of the price. because And there's nothing wrong with the indicator or the way it's working. It has to do with how Heikenashi candles are calculated. And again, what this one is, is basically using Heikenashi candles, but it's just put in the form of a moving average. Okay, in this case, this is like a, I think I have this set at 10 periods. Yeah, so this is basically... You know, this is basically following. If I put a regular 10 period exponential moving average on my chart, it would follow this, this Heikenashi smooth. So basically, this is a 10 period moving average, but it's using Heikenashi candles. Okay, but the way Heikenashis are can uh, calculated, they're not calculated the way a regular candlestick is. So, and I want to show you how that might throw you off a little bit. And it's not really a big deal if you're getting in at the beginning of a of an actual impulsive move, but it is something that you should be aware of. So let's just take, and I did this in advance, and I, I tried to take a candlestick that wasn't overly big, because it, although like something like this would be really pronounced, but just to show you even on a, a moderate candlestick, let's take this one right here. So this is on September 12th, as you can see at the bottom there, 10 o'clock on my platform. Closing price at the bottom of this is 107.10, okay? So just remember that 107.10, September 12th at 10 o'clock. Now I'm going to go back to the, um, I'm going to go back to this template, and let's find this candlestick here. November, uh, excuse me, September 10th, 10 o'clock, 107.10 is way down here. And we get the right time, so we're doing right. Okay, so you can see right where my crosshair is right now. Okay, 107.10, I want to make this exact or as close as I can. Okay, so right there. So right where the cross here, that's where the candlestick actually closed. But if you look above, you can see the Heikenashi candle is way up there. So if you hit sell right at this time on this, on this chart, and this is the uh, Euro dollar one hour chart. If you hit sell right here, your sell order would show right down here, not up here. And you might be like, what the heck is wrong? Like, I thought I was up here, and the price is already down here. Well, there's nothing wrong. It, again, it's the way the Heikenashi candles are calculated. And again, this is using basically a moving average format. So, 
yes, the moving average is technically up here, but the price is here. Okay, so it's just a little quirk. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean the indicator is not working right. It's actually working exactly as it should. But that might be a little concerning for you because if you hit sell and you're already down here, you're like, oh, did I get a bad fill? How come it's not filling up here? Well, that's because the candlestick, the actual, the actual candlestick is way down here. So when you hit, you know, if you hit uh, sell right at the close of that candlestick, your sell line is going to be down here, not up here. Okay. But again, there's nothing wrong with the indicator. That's it's working exactly as it should. Again, you're basically looking at a Heiken Ashi moving average. Okay. So, and you remember that big one that we had over here. I mean, if I if I did that here, your sell line would be way down here. The Heiken Ashi is way up here. It'd be like, what the heck? I got a really bad fill. So the bottom line is, it's not really a bad fill. If the price is going to continue to move down, in this case, then whatever you know you just that's where you got in you waited till the close of the candle on this time frame and that's it okay so there's nothing wrong with it but on the other hand if you're the type of person which is more the way I am where I still like to see the uh, Heiken Ashi candles um, then you can just overlay the Heiken Ashi um, indicator over the candlesticks now um, if I do it with this particular indicator, um, the problem with this is when I go into the settings for this one, and this is this, I don't remember where I downloaded this from, it won't save the settings if I try to change the color and the thickness of these lines. Because to me, this is a little bit too obtrusive on my chart. I just, I don't like the bright red and greens. And I tried to make these, you know, thinner using the settings. And I could do it on this one chart, but if I tried to save it and apply it to another chart, it, just, it wouldn't save it. It kept defaulting back. Okay, So I found a different one, and I just want to show you this. Uh, and here it is right here. Let me go back to the hourly chart. Uh, okay, well, I only have this set for the four hour and higher. So you can see... This is again, and I have this set. Now I, I changed the settings on this. This is set to a 21 period Heiken Ashi. Okay, so the other one was a 10. I set this one to 21. Okay, and I changed it to a linear weighted moving average. Okay, uh, because it uh, follows the price a little bit better. It puts even a little bit more weight on the current price, even more than an exponential. But you can set this to however you want. You know, you can, it's all four types of moving averages. Simple, exponential, smooth, and linear. So it defaults to exponential, which is perfectly fine. You really can use any of these. I wouldn't recommend using smooth, although smooth looks really great. And, in, in, you know, in hindsight, it's going to give you a later entry because it's uh, smooth. It's, it's a much small, s slower version, uh, the way it's calculated. So I wouldn't recommend using smooth because, again, it, it's very likely to get you a late entry. So I would recommend simple exponential, exponential or linear. And I changed it to 21 from 10 because if I use 10, I find that it hugs the candles too much and then I really can't see them. So changing it to 21 is still short enough where you get some decent signals, but it's uh, fast enough where, uh, or slow enough where it stands off the, um, you know, where it stands off the uh, candles, uh, the candlesticks a little bit more. And you'll see what I mean. If I change this to 10, you'll see. I'm doing this on an OS screen, but you can see it, it overlays it right on top of the candles, makes it harder. But you don't want to go too high. I mean, the, the further you put this back, the more it'll, like if I put it on 50, okay, but now you, you know, you start to lose some of your detail, you know, in terms of the, the corrective moves. So that's too long. So I, I think 21 is, is pretty good. And I use 21 because that's a Fibonacci number. So instead of using 20, I use 21. You could also try 34, which is a Fib number too. Uh, that might still be a little long, but let's see here. Yeah, I mean, 34 would probably work too. So I wouldn't go any higher than that. But it, it still gives you, um, you know, enough detail here where you can see the corrections and then potentially get back in on the impulse and not have it be too late. But the longer you make it, the more it's going to push these this entry signals further out and potentially you get a, a later fill. So if I put it back to 21, 
you know so right here this is a perfect example okay so on 21 let's just take this area right here you get a signal in terms of this thing turning red again you get a signal right here if I make it 34 I just want to show you this. This is why you have to be careful. If I change this to 34 and I'm using the color change of the indicator uh, to tell me when to get in, you can see instead of getting in way over here, now you're not getting in until way down here. So you're, you're literally, now this is a four hour chart, I admit that, but this is literally 60 pips you've left on the table. Now this still would have turned out to be a good trade, but you left 60 pips on the table. Because now you see the signal is down here at the close of this candle instead of when we had it set at 21 back here. So it's always give and take, right? If you shorten the moving average time, you're going to potentially get more fault signals. But if you lengthen it, you're potentially going to miss uh, better entry points. Okay? So I just want to tell you <clears throat> again what this, this represents. This is a 21 period linear weighted moving average. That's all this is, but it's using Heikinashi candles, okay? So it takes the 21 period and it incorporates Heikinashi candles, which again have a different calculation than regular candles. And as you can see what it does, it helps you visualize potential re-entries to the trend, okay? So, and this one up here is this, this uh, dark red one is a 100 period simple. This is just, Nothing fancy. This is just a hundred period simple, and you, you can you can or not use this one or any other moving average. Um, and you could just easily take this one off, but this one just kind of delineates the larger trend. Okay, so you can see what happens here. You know, we came down here, then you can see this the the Heikinashi smooth turn blue. Now you did get a little red right here to go short right here. Depending where you put your stop, you probably would have gone into some drawdown. But this is what I'm saying, like. You could change the, the indicator setting to a higher number and then turn all of this blue so you wouldn't have gotten in right here, but then it would shift these blue uh, candles further out and you may, probably would have gotten an entry like way down here instead of maybe, you know, back here. So again, it's give and take depending, you know, what your time frame is to trade and how close you want to, um, you know, you want to get this, um, you know, these signals. So... You know, but if let's say you had taken the short right here, um, and you can see what they did. They went up and re, re grabbed this, you know, they went up and tagged the stop losses right here. Very classic manipulation, right? They know that traders are going short down here on this little breakout and that they're putting their stops right above this swing. And what do they do? They come right back to it. They tap you out right here on this candle, wick you out, take out all these stops, and then they go, okay? So that comes down to where you're putting your stop loss. So maybe instead of putting it here, as I have advised on a lot of other videos, put it somewhere else. This is too easy of a retail place to put your stop. So instead of putting it here, maybe put it up here at this swing. Then there's no way you would have gotten stopped out on this and you would have, yes, you would have gone into some drawdown. And again, this is a, this is a large time frame. So, you know, you potentially would have had about, uh, you know, 100, 100 and, you know, maybe even 125 pips of drawdown. So maybe that's too much and you would have gotten out sooner anyways. I don't know. But I'm just saying, depending what your time frame you're using, you have to, you know, position size accordingly. Um, if you look at this area on a one hour, I don't know really what this looks like on a one hour chart. Well, I don't have the indicator set. I only have these two indicators showing on the four hour and higher. I don't, so what I would have done is, I would have gone to the one hour chart and looked at this area on the one hour chart and seen, you know, did, did it look like a, a potential entry. So here's that same candle here on the one hour chart. And as you can see what happened, I may not have taken this because right here you can see is this support level right here or demand level, whatever you want to call it. And then there was another one right here. So really your entry would have been probably not until this candle right over here. Okay. So that's why I'm saying, even though you, you got the signal, you have to kind of maybe step down to a little bit lower time frame and check that out. Now let's just see for a laugh wh what this looks like on the four hour. So this actually would have been your entry when it closed below these support levels. So let's go back to here. And here's that entry on the four hour, okay? So now, remember what I was just saying about having a longer time frame. 
So now if you change the, the, the moving average length, maybe you wouldn't have gotten your signal until back here. So let's change this to 50 again. And that shifts it this way, you know. So like I said, you have to just kind of play around with, with these moving average lengths and, you know, whatever. And a lot of it, too, guys, depends on what time frame you're changing, you're trading on, okay, or entering on, okay. So I don't want to get too much onto a sidetrack here. The main point of this video is I wanted to just show you that if you weren't comfortable just trading, um, just trading this, okay, without any candlesticks to, for perspective, then this is what I would recommend is, and, and you could use this one, uh, this indicator uh, is this one right here, uh, but I, I just, these colors just don't make it for me, and I'm not able to change them in the settings. It, it won't hold my changes. So I happen to find this one, and these are the two default colors, which actually the 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 uh, the ones going up actually pretty much match my the color on my chart. So this was perfect. I'm not really crazy about the red, but it's not a bright red. Um, it's kind of like a fire brick red, so it's it's not as in my face. Um, because, uh, again, I wasn't able to change this and, and hold the, the color change. So, anyways, guys, that's the main point of this. So I want to say that you can apply this Heikinashi Smooth to a candlestick chart if you're, if you're comfortable, uh, if you're not comfortable not seeing the candles, okay? Because some people just, you know, they like to see the candles to kind of have that perspective instead of just going off purely off an indicator, uh, which is basically you're just a moving average trader with you know is what that old that other template showed okay so I did want to just kind of point that out and again guys uh, if you want to um, if you don't know where to get these Heikinashi smooth indicators just leave a comment I can drop you a link to them they're free um, like I said they, I have nothing to do with it I just found this one I actually found on the um, the MetaTrader marketplace if you go to mql4.com which is the MetaTrader kind of market, uh, that's what I call it, marketplace. If you go there and click on market and then just search Heikinashi Smooth, you'll find this one in there and it's free. Okay, there's other ones in there to pay for. Do not pay for them. The other ones, you know, they're like, some of them are 30 bucks, 50 bucks. Do not pay for them. They have all the little tweaks in there and all the little cute little gimmicks. Not worth it. Just get the free one. It's perfectly fine. Uh, and that's it. Okay. So if you want to uh, check that out, um, like I said, uh, you can try this with or without the uh, candlesticks and use whichever version of the Heikinashi Smooth you want. The other difference I want to just mention between this one and the other one with this one is that on this one, there's actually four settings. Remember on the other one I just had on there? There is uh, only two settings. There's one for the moving average type, and as I told you, I set it to linear. And there's one for the moving average length, which I, I told you I had set to 21 or 34 uh, or whatever, okay? This one, you actually have four settings. You have two moving averages and two moving average methods. It gets a little confusing. So this is the other reason why I like this one better. You don't need that many settings. The, the two are fine. You're going to get what you need just playing around with those two. Okay, so that's the other reason why I prefer this one over the first one that I showed you is because you only have to have, you only have two setting adjustments here, not four, uh, to play around with and, and really confuse you because there's not really a big difference anyways uh, within the, those other four, you know, if you keep the numbers close. Um, you know, it's really the moving average method that makes the difference. If you don't change the moving average length, there are only very, very small differences, but there's just no reason to have four different settings. So that's the other reason why I like this one better, okay? So I'm going to leave it there, guys. You can compare this one uh, against the uh, the video I made the other day with just the Heikinashi Smooth and the two moving averages. Go back and watch that one. That's a little different strategy, but again, it, it doesn't use any existing candlesticks, but it does have that little quirk where you're not going to actually know where the closing candle was because you're not, you know, and if it's an impulsive candle, you're not really showing the, um, the actual entry point. Although what I did do on that one, 
uh, and it takes a minute to load here, <clears throat> is I I enabled in the in MetaTrader. So I can show you. I turned on the uh, the ask line to make it red. Okay, so at least it gives you a little bit of an idea where the candlestick actually closed. And the other thing is, is it also shows you over here on the on the right. Um, yeah, I think you guys can see this right here. You can see this is the price right now. It's not really moving because it's it's well, it's actually five o'clock. The market's closed now. But if the market were open, you'd be seeing this thing jumping around. So this is the actual price. So you can see the candle, the Heikinashi candle is up here. You can see where my cursor is, where my crosshair is at 107.01. But the actual candlestick is way down here. So if if that like kind of messes you up and you don't like doing that because you can't really see where the actual candlestick is, then um, you can either enable the ask line, which again the reason why it's not showing is because the market's closed now because it's five o'clock. You can either enable that so you'll have that red line that'll be moving and, and that will show you where the current price is. Or you can look over here if you don't want to have that line dancing around on your chart. You can just look at where it shows it over here on the right. Or like I said, just use the other indicator and overlay it over the candlesticks. Alright? So I hope that's clear guys. It felt like that's a little confusing, but it, it's showing you the same thing. It's just one's using the candlesticks in the background and one's and this one is not. But there are a couple little quirks if you don't use the candlestick. So alright. So uh, I hope that makes sense. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below and smash that like button again. Hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, like I said, on this or anything else, if you need help finding the indicators, uh, let me know. I'm happy to send you a link in the comments. And you can go and download it and install it on your platform and play around with it, do whatever you want. All right, guys, that's it. Have a great weekend. Catch up with you soon.